Okay, in this video, we're going to look at simple STM32 ARM programming. So this is my little industrial controller, and this is my circuitry here. And I've mounted the components on a Vero board and installed that board into this little plastic enclosure. Now you'll notice I'm using an Arduino Nano, which contains an Atmega 328P microcontroller. It's powered by 8 volts from this regulator here, and the regulator is getting its power from uh, the terminal strip, 12 volts. Now the GPIO of the Arduino Nano is fed into this interface chip here, which is a driver chip. It has eight Darlington drivers, which can sync up to 500 milliamps. Now the output of this chip is fed up to the terminal strip, where I could control relays or contactors. I could also bring out the SPI R2C bus up to the terminal strip uh, to control sensors. Also I have an HC06 uh, Bluetooth module on board which I could gain access to this uh, controller through my smartphone for diagnostic purposes. So what I want to do, I want to upgrade my uh, controller to an ARM uh, controller. So I'm going to use the 1BITC module, as you see here. It has the same uh, footprint as Arduino Nano, so I could just install it into the same uh, enclosure. But this is a powerful microcontroller. It contains an ARM microcontroller. It has an STM32F415, which has 1 mega flash and 192K bytes of RAM, and I can clock it up to 168 megahertz. It has a lot of internal peripherals, more than Arduino Nano, so it's a pretty powerful chip, and it's a pretty complex chip. So it has a pretty big learning curve. So to cut down on the learning curve, I, I, I programmed some simple commands that I could use on the command line to access the, the ARM microcontroller. So I'm using the KISS method, the, the keep it simple stupid, which was sometimes used by Richard Feynman in his lectures. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the command words that I use to program the STM32F415 microcontroller to make it a little simpler to program. Okay, when somebody is learning about a new microcontroller, the first thing they do is go to the GPIO because they want to blink an LED. So we'll do that. So you can see here the three ports, port A, port B, and port C. Now these uh, three ports are on the STM ARM microcontroller, and each port has 16 I.O. lines. There's also a port H for the real-time clock crystal, uh, but we'll just leave that alone. We'll just concentrate on the three ports. And these three ports are available on the one bitsy module that I'll be using. And we'll concentrate on port B. And we can see port B starts with PB.0, and then it goes PB.1, and goes all the way down to PB.15. The same for port A and port C. It's labeled the same. And you'll notice PB.3 and PB.4 is being used by the JTAG. So that's the alternate function pin, so we'll just leave those pins. And PB.6 and PB.7 is for the USART 1, the TX and RX lines, it's the RS-232 port, where I gain access to the microcontroller. And then we're going to use PB.10, PB.11, and PB.12. So we'll hook up two LEDs, one to PB.11 and PB.12, and we'll hook up a, a push-button switch to PB.10. Then we'll write some code to access uh, the switch, to read the switch, and to turn on the LEDs. So I'll breadboard this on a, on a breadboard, and we'll write some code to access the switch and the two LEDs. Okay, I have my one Bitsy ARM module mounted on my breadboard. You can also see an HC06 Bluetooth module plugged into the breadboard to gain access to the microcontroller through the RS-232 port. So you can see the two wires here. That's your PB6 and PB7. That's the TX and RX. That's fed into the into the HC06 Bluetooth module. Now I could have used an FTDI module, USB to serial, but I, I like using the, the Bluetooth module because it's a lot cleaner. There's no cables. Now you can also see I have a push button switch and two LEDs mounted on the on the breadboard. So the push button switch is connected to PB10, and this LED is connected to PB11, and this LED is connected to PB12. Now you notice there's no pull-up uh, resistor on the on the switch, so we'll have to we'll have to uh, enable the pull-up resistor inside the microcontroller when we do the code. So there's the setup. It's pretty simple. So now we have to write some code to read the push-button switch and to control the two LEDs. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, which is a serial terminal program, and I'm connected to the STM32 ARM microcontroller on the one bitsy module the serial port USART 1. Now if I hit the enter key on my keyboard, you can see I get an OK prompt echoed back for the microcontroller. So I know I'm connected and communicating with the microcontroller, so we're good to go. 
Now when we first power up an STM32 ARM microcontroller, all the GPIO lines are configured as inputs and all the GPIO ports are disabled. So the first thing we got to do is enable all the ports that we want to use. Now in our case, we want to enable port B because port B is connected to our LEDs and our switch. So I'll send a command to enable port B. So now port B is enabled. But what I like doing when I'm writing code, I like to enable all the ports on the microcontroller. It's like a global enable. So I can send a command for that. So now there's one less thing to worry about. So all the ports are enabled. So next I want to look at the status of all the pins on port B. So I could uh, send a command for that. So we check all, all the pins on port B. So there's all 16 pins on port B. If you notice three pins three and four are being used, they're labeled alternate function. So that's the JTAG, that's the for the bootloader for the microcontroller. So the microcontroller is using uh, pins three and four. Now pin six and seven has been used by the USART one, that's the TX and RX lines. That's how we're communicating with the microcontroller. And all the rest of the pins are inputs. Now we want to put a pull-up resistor on pin 10 for our, for our push button switch. So we'll send a command for that because it's already configured as an input. That's pin 10. It's already configured as input. So all we need is a, a pull-up resistor. So I could send that command. So now we have a pull-up resistor on pin 10 for our switch. So now we have to configure pin 11 and pin 12 as outputs to drive our LEDs. So I'll send the first command for pin 11, I configure it as an output. So now it's an output. So next I'll configure pin 12 as an output for the LED on pin 12. So now pin 12 is an output. So now, now we can look at the configuration again of port B and we can check to see that everything took properly. So you can see pin 11 and pin 12 is configured as an output for our LEDs and pin 10 is an input for a switch. So now everything is configured on our port. So now we just have to write some code to control our LEDs and to monitor our push button switch. Okay, next we're going to send some commands to control the LEDs and to monitor the switch. So the first thing we'll do, we'll turn on an LED. So we'll drive port B, pin 11 high, which will turn on the LED. So there's the command. An LED comes on. Now we can send the command port B pin 11 low. We can send that command and it will turn the LED off. And we can do the same thing for the other LED. It's on port B pin 12. We could drive that high. And we could send uh, the port B pin 12 low. Just turn it off. Okay, next we'll blink the LED, so we'll send a little script. It's a simple script. So port B pin 11 will go high for 500 milliseconds, then it'll go low for 500 milliseconds, and I'll do that over and over again. So all the code from the beginning of the line up to the word many will be repeated over and over again until we hit any key on the keyboard. So it's a handy word, many, if you want to run some code over and over again say to monitor a pin or monitor an input. So we could do that to blink an LED. So now the LED is blinking. And if I hit any key, it'll stop. Now there's another script using the, the command word times. So we could run a function so many times. So here port B pin 11 will go high for 500 milliseconds. It'll go low for 500 milliseconds. It'll do that five times. So it we'll actually will blink the LED five times. So I'll run that. And you can see the LED was blinking five times. So now we're going to actually look at the switch. We'll monitor the push button switch. So I'll run a little bit of code to do that. So I'll put that on the screen. So port B pin 10, high question mark. So it's asking for the status of, of uh, port B pin 10. Then the, the dot, the period, will will, uh, will display it. It'll do a character turn. It'll do that many times. So when we first run it, we'll see that the 
the switch is high because of the pull-up resistor. So we get we get ones, and if I press the button, we get a zero. So we're monitoring pin 10 of the switch. And hit any key to, to stop. So next we're actually going to write a little program. It's called button.led. And I'll run that. So every time I press the, the push button, it'll monitor the status of the push button and turn on the LED every time the, the button is pressed. So I could run that. It's called button.led. Now when I hit the push button, the LED comes on. So now it's monitoring the switch, getting the status, and then activating the LED. So that's a little example how we can do some simple programming for the STM32 ARM microcontroller. Okay, that was an example of simple ARM programming on the STM32 line of microcontrollers. Now I've used the same technique on the Arduino Nano on that Mega 328P microcontroller. Now there's nothing wrong with this microcontroller. It's good for small and medium applications, but for heavy loads, you probably want to get into the ARM microcontroller. Now this technique is good for beginners, it gets you working down at the register level. It's good for getting to know the internal workings of the micro. Now I've written large and complex applications using this technique, but once you get to know the internal workings of the micro and you get quite familiar with it, then you can use the traditional compiler as an IDE. Now if you want to program using this technique, I'll put a link in the description box to the software that you could run on the, on the STM32 family of microcontrollers. It's called McCrisp. So hope this video gives you another example how you could program ARM microcontrollers.